What was your scariest experience? Home Alone, Part 2. Lightning bolt hit the tree 10 feet out my window as I was watching the storm from my bed. I was home alone maybe 13 years old. It was the loudest sound I ever heard, and I admit, I went from loving lightning to being afraid of it, but only when it's close. The same tree got hit two more times in the following 10 years, also when I was home alone. I wasn't at home, but used to work in one of the older buildings on my campus, former dorm turned office building. I was working on December 23rd, so nobody was there. Lights were off, doors were all locked, etc. Once I turned our hall lights and set up in my office with my dog, I went to sit at my desk and set up the computer. Right after sitting down, I heard footsteps down the hall, but didn't think much of it. They started to get closer to my door, so I looked over at my door to obviously see nothing. I listened as the footsteps went all the way down my hallway and past my office. Once they passed my office, I walked into the hall only for the door at the end of the hallway to open and slam shut as I watched. I flipped. Lived with my aunt for a year, and she would leave for business all the time. I swear her house is haunted and only did things when I was alone. A couple of times I'd go to sleep with my door open and wake up to it closed. Seen a girl in white walk into rooms, front door would unlock itself and door would open. Bags of chips would be thrown from a box on top of the fridge, would scare the crap out of me. I remember I was alone in my house. I lived in rural Texas, and we had a shooting not long ago at that time, so I was pretty scared being alone, especially at night. I had a tangled pair of friendship necklaces that I meant to give to my friend. They were tangled pretty bad, so to calm myself down, I started untangling them. A minute or two later, my phone in another room rang. I went there, and it was an unknown number. I didn't pick it up and went back to the room with the tangled necklaces, but they weren't tangled anymore. They were perfectly straight and completely separate. Never figured out how that happened. Didn't sleep that night either. I wasn't totally alone, so not sure if this counts. I was with my older sister alone at home. My mom called us and told us our grandmother had gone off her meds. They were told she took the car and was heading to us. Granted, we lived three states away. My mom told us to lock all the windows and doors, and her and my dad were heading home as fast as possible. My sister and I did just that. We sat up in my sister's room. We heard a noise of the door and went down the stairs, expecting our parents. My grandmother got inside the house. She had a deck of cards and asked to play Go Fish with us. My sister locked me in my parents' bedroom and played Go Fish with Grandma. My parents made it home, and Grandpa made the next flight out to drive her home. Yay, mental illness. Not necessarily at home, but one time my dad left me and my brother in the car when he got a haircut and we were about 9 or 10 at the time. We were in a small parking lot right next to a busy road in a sort of run-down side of town. We were just chilling in the car when we see a shirtless man jaywalking across and stumbling down the road in our direction about 500 feet down the road. We noted how odd and kind of funny it was. He kept getting closer and closer to where our car was parked, and it made me feel some type of way. I guess me and my brother felt the same way, and we did that thing that all kids do when they duck down behind the car door so outside people can't see them in the car alone. After a minute or two, we felt the guy must have passed by already. I kind of stood on my knees on the floor of the car, and when I did, the guy walked right up to our shotgun window, which was open, with a curious and crazed look in his eyes. I happened to be sitting behind the driver's seat, and he noticed me in the back. He looked right at me with the same crazed look for about a second or two while I looked back in stunned silence and then stumbled along. He was probably in his 50s with a scrawny build. He had dark sweatpants on, and he seemed like he was on heavy drugs, crack from the looks of it. After it was over, my brother theorized that he walked up to our car trying to steal something but was scared off when he saw us. We thought about how much worse this could have been if he was more aggressive or had a weapon of some sort as we were completely defenseless, and he was clearly not in a stable state of mind. It was really scary. When my neighbor broke into our house repeatedly every time our parents were gone, he would stand in the bush with a sharpened star picket and throw rocks at the house. He shot a crossbow bolt above my dad's head, and my dad bashed the shit out of him. But the scariest time was he snuck in whilst no one was home but me and my younger brothers. He was walking into our bedroom, about to get close to where we were sleeping, and the alarm on the fridge started going off because one of my brothers left the fridge open. He then ran out of the house. 
Okay, so I used to babysit my younger siblings. I was a sophomore in high school and my parents went out. We lived out in the middle of nowhere, so at night no one comes up to our road. We lived on a turnaround and we were the only house on the road. Well, the dogs started barking outside. Okay, no big deal. They usually bark at cows, coyotes, whatever. But we saw headlights coming up. Okay, it's mom and dad. No, that's not their car. It comes up to the house and sits in the driveway for a few minutes. I'm kind of freaking out, then it leaves. Ten minutes later, it comes back, gets up in the yard and sits there. I tell my brother and sister to come into my parents' room and hide in my dad's closet. I get his shotgun out, grab a few shells, do a safety check, everything my dad taught me, put the shells in my pocket. I don't load it, just in case, and I walk out. My dog is freaking the hell out at his truck. He's growling, barking, all that. I stand on the porch with this heavy-ass shotgun in my hand and call him. This truck is still facing me with its headlights on. My dog comes to my side and I cock the gun. Aim. They fucking speed off. I'm shaking scared. I tell myself, remember, red Toyota Tacoma, rear bumper missing. Red Tacoma, rear bumper missing. I get inside, put the shotgun propped up by the door, and tell my brother and sister it's all clear. I was freaked the hell out. I started crying. That year, two people were stabbed in their house two miles down the road. They were home sleeping when someone broke in. They both survived. Plus, a house 10 miles down the road was robbed. This happened a few months apart. My parents didn't learn about it until my mom told someone she knew about what happened at her house. Fucking scared all of us. But luckily, my dad taught us kids proper gun safety and how to shoot. I guess for times like these. We always just thought it was something fun to do. We lived in the South, so it was common to have a gun and to go out and shoot, ski, whatever. But damn, if I hadn't known how to imitate something like that, I don't know if we'd been, been okay. Plus, thanks to my dog for probably scaring them too much to get out of their truck. No one wants to try a big-ass German Shepherd. The house I grew up in was haunted, like bat, to the point where it had to be blessed and all that. I have so many stories and have seen so much shit, man, but for the sake of the OP's question, I'll give an appropriate response. This was when I was a bit older, I'd say 19 at the time, and used to smoke. I'd always go out on the front porch because it was less creepy than the back deck. About halfway through my cigarette, I hear growling and panting, like deep-ass breaths quickly and aggressively approaching me. It was too dark for me to make anything out, so I just froze. Whatever it was runs right next to me, then onto the driveway. And from there, all I hear is its nails pattering on the concrete. It's like they were made of steel, and its breathing it sounded like a person at the end of a marathon. That sound stuck with me for a while. To this day, I still have no idea what it could have been, and if you knew where I lived, you'd know how hard it would be to even imagine it. But man, I still remember going back inside, looking in the mirror, and how pale my face was. From everything I've seen and experienced there, there's been really three instances that have been burned into my memory. This was one of them. I still remember every detail clear as day, ten years later. I was 19, still living at my mom's house. She was out for the night with friends. Around midnight, someone knocked at my back door and my dog started barking like crazy. I then heard my neighbor I've known for years. He was calling for my mom, so I opened the door and told him she was gone and if everything was alright. He had a bat in his hand, which I did not see before opening the door. He then began to tell me he had locked someone in his closet and they wouldn't stop screaming and it was driving him crazy and that he needed me to come look. His eyes were glazed over a bit, I remember, and I was totally freaked out. Long story short, I got him to leave, and I called my mom. A few weeks later, when everything settled down, we were told by his mom that he has schizophrenia that was apparently getting worse over the years. I've since moved away, and it's been almost six years since I've seen him or his family. My grandpa lived with us for the last three months of his life. He'd had a mild heart attack, is there such a thing? And as he was a wandering spirit and hadn't held down a permanent address in years, check your mental health, friends, he slept on our sofa. I was 13. My parents ran to the farm, dad's parents' place, about 15 miles from my house. Grandpa told me he was tired and went to lie down. About 20 minutes after he lay down, he called me in and said, The path is clear now, I can go. As soon as your mom gets home, I can go. I was confused and told him he lived with us now. He didn't need to go. He rolled over and went back to sleep. My parents came home an hour later, and my mom didn't even have her shoes on yet when Grandpa called out for help to the bathroom. They were helping him across the living room, and he collapsed. 
dead before he hit the ground. It took me years to tell my mom the words he said. So while I wasn't alone when he passed, it's only because he waited for me not to be. My home being broken into when I was 22. My family had gone on holiday and I was home alone for two weeks with a cat. My bedroom was at the back of the house on the first floor and it was the middle of summer so I slept with my window open. On the fourth night my family were away, at 3 a.m. I heard the sound of someone trying to open the back door. For reference, it's one of those double PVC doors. You have to open one before you can open the other and they were trying the wrong one first. I heard them shake the first door, unlock the correct one, a yowl and a laugh. I then heard the keys being shaken, thrown on the table, and then footsteps of these people walking quickly through my house, and then the sound of footsteps on the stairs. I was petrified, so scared I couldn't move, I could barely breathe. My poor cat then came into my room and collapsed on the floor. I came to my senses and turned on the light. They had a lookout in the garden, who shouted out when they'd seen the light turn on, and then I heard these people run away. The yowl I heard had been from the kicking slash hitting my cat, who had gone to investigate the noise of the back door being open. She had then run up ahead of them to my room. For the next week and a half, I could barely sleep, not knowing if these people would come back, and the police weren't able to find any fingerprints, even suggesting I had imagined it all. Turns out, a man from my mom's work had heard her saying she was going away and decided to arrange for some of his friends to break in and steal her jewelry. He was found out when he told someone else from their work about his plan afterwards. I wasn't exactly home alone, just me and my brother, but I was upstairs and he was in the basement. This crazy thunderstorm had rolled into the area and my parents wanted to go drive in it and my sister went with them. Anyways, it's coming down pretty hard and there's this really bright flash of lightning. This is during the day, so the fact I saw it so well meant it struck really close. An instant later, a giant crack of thunder boomed through the whole house. My sister had this princess doorbell on her bedroom door and the thunderstorms caused it to go off. I immediately thought it was a power surge since the lightning was so close. Then I realized that her doorbell was battery operated. At this point, my brother was checking on me because he thought for sure we got hit. He saw me standing in the hall looking at her doorbell. I told him it went off by itself. He assumed that it was the vibrations from the boom, so he took the button off the wall and tried shaking it as hard as he could to prove the thunder had caused it to vibrate enough to go off. However, it never happened. We asked my dad to try it when he got home and nothing. It's possible the static electricity set it off. A tree right near us got snapped in half by lightning, so I assumed that was it, but it still freaked me out for a few years. I was about 11 years old and we lived in a condo. My mom had gone to hang out by the pool in the complex, so I was home alone. There was a knock at the door. It was an older teenage boy, 16 to 17 maybe, selling magazines for a school. I said no thanks. He started getting extremely pushy and said he was going to put me down for a trial of the magazine without having to pay and then I could pay if I liked it. I said no and was extremely uncomfortable, but he wasn't letting me shut the door. He was blocking it with his arm. Then he said he needed to borrow a pen. Instead of letting me get him a pen, he forced his way into the condo. By then I was really freaking out. I was so scared I didn't know what to do. I wanted to run out, but my dog was in the house and didn't want to leave my dog alone with the potentially dangerous stranger. So I just stood there in shock and terror while this guy went over to my computer desk and got a pen. He really did just get a pen, and he left afterwards without incident. I know it's kind of tame compared to some of these stories, but it really scared the hell out of me. I was shaken up for a bit for the rest of the day. He was probably just some awkward teenager with bad social skills and didn't know how scary he was being, but I still remember the incidents years later and how scared I was. I don't even like opening the door now.